What I've been trying to do is to use the special privilege that I've been given uh, of, of getting access to a Harvard education and a law school education and, and with the Jesuits and all the different people and meeting, you know, Baba Muktananda and getting to meet all the spiritual leaders of our, our people and our planet is to try to develop a really intelligent, uh, sophisticated, spiritually informed, but rationally developed uh, set of policies for our dealing with extraterrestrial civilization. Welcome back to Strange Normal. My name is Brad Burnham. We talk about the strange events that happen in your normal life to give you a biblical understanding of what's going on around you. And there's going to be a lot going on around you. So hit that subscribe button and click that little bell icon so you're notified when things like this happen. Now tonight's show is going to be very, very interesting. I would even go as far to say is this is the one you want to share. This is the one for the books. This is the one we're going to be referencing many times in the future. So this is the one you want to watch all the way through from the beginning to end because the most interesting information is essentially at the end. We're going to be talking about how the Jesuits play into this whole UAP phenomenon that's going on. What is in their archives and what have they been studying specifically about different religions and how they will react to this phenomenon in the near future. We're also going to be talking about different worldviews of, of these religions and uh, how climate change plays into this, and specifically the Vatican. It all ties together. It's all coming to fruition right now in your lifetime, and you want to know what's happening, and so you should watch this episode. So tonight I have Mikey Jenny here again. We have a, an incredible video to show you. Mikey Jenny, is a, he understands the truth behind these things as well as I do, and we're going to dive deep into a very interesting video that um, is really trying to push an agenda. And what we, I've discovered, I've watched the video once, Mikey hasn't yet, but what I've discovered is that this guy, he, he, he apparently really knows the background story, and he's trying to reveal what's going on uh, behind the scenes, but he is deceived by the agenda. So he has what he thinks is truth, but it's not the truth. It's the narrative that they're going to be pushing. So, um, without further ado, we're gonna we're gonna dive into this, and we'll pause it here and there, and and kind of talk about what what it's saying. Here we go. Let's just say this right up front. Everybody, hold on. You're going to need to rewind a lot. There is no other human I've met like you who has had the breadth of experience and somehow had their fingers in the pies of so many different high-profile things. It's almost unbelievable. And you seem to have had um, access to very deep levels of information and knowledge throughout the whole thing. Now let's talk about how you ended up uh, in the Vatican Library. So let's talk about, I remember you showing the drawing that you, you yeah, sneaked yeah. your little you know, yeah, yellow yeah. pad into yellow your pad. pants and came out yeah, yeah. with a, a yeah. sketch, a tracing yeah. of these symbols. What he's going to go into right now, he's going to talk about um, him going into the Vatican Libraries. And, and, and looking through all this stuff the Vatican already knows about UFOs and UAPs and all this other stuff that they have, they have archived but hasn't talked about. And, and this, this is an, it's, it's an incredible story, but it really um, ties into how things are going to be revealed at the end and how religion, primarily the Catholic Church, is going to say that they have known about this the whole time. Check this out. Thing of the, let's talk about how the Vatican became involved. Well, what it was is that I, I contacted the Vatican and again asked them if I could get access to this, uh, in their classified. Place. And what happened is that that's what generated the Air Force authorizing me to go in to see the classified portions of Blue Book. This was actually in the files of the Blue Book mm -hmm. before I saw this. Mm -hmm. Is that they they actually brought the files to Washington D.C. And they brought them to the Jefferson Building, which was a brand new building for the Congressional, uh, the Library of Congress. There wasn't anybody in those offices yet. And I went over there on a Saturday morning, had to show them three different forms of photo ID to get in. There were these two suits at the door, you know. And so I went in, and they said, you have to walk down this hall. And so I walked down the hall, you know, echoing in this hall with nobody in the whole building, brand new building. And get in this elevator, and I go down to the basement. 
and I get out of the elevator and I can see this light on down in this this office down there. So I go I go down and there's two other suits there who recheck my ID, and I just I, it just occurred to me when I was coming down in the lo- in the elevator, I opened up my briefcase and took out a yellow pad and put it under my arm, and so when I went down to the to the basement floor, and met with these guys, they took my briefcase and said, look, you can't take any notes or anything on anything you see in there, and so <clears throat> I walked in. And what there was, it was this, this room about maybe uh, 18, 20 feet wide, about 10 feet uh, deep. And they had these, these big uh, folding tables. You think it's going to be something really sophisticated, right? They had these folding tables, and they had these boxes, these little shoebox size things. They were this kind of uh, light green, kind of institutional green boxes, and they were filled with microfiche. And <clears throat> I took the microfiche out, and... Brought them to one of these very unsophisticated tin kind of microfiche crank machines, yeah. and I started looking through them all. And I said, "I'm never going to have time to read all these documents of what's in here." But I was looking for pictures, and so I found this set of pictures that showed an absolutely uncontestable UFO that had landed, had hit in this field, and it had plowed this big furrow across the field and was stuck in the side of a bank, and it was all snow there. So this wasn't Roswell. Right. So there, here's this here's this UFO sticking at like a 45 degree angle up out of this big snowbank <clears throat> and there are US Air Force people all around it. You could they had these big parkas on and you could I could I recognized what they were and they were they were taking uh, film of it. So this dated it somewhat. It was a film camera with those two big rolls on the top of the camera. Mm-hmm. You know so like it's in the 50s right. or something. And uh, and so the, I'm 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 looking through these pictures, these different pictures of it, and suddenly I realized that at the bottom of the dome of this UFO, I could see these symbols. And so what I did is I I I I, fo- I took out the yellow pad and I un- opened it up to the back cardboard cover on the inside, and I put it under the microfiche and I I sh- shrunk the microfiche to fit right onto the page, and then I traced. traced. <laughs> I, I traced the symbols exactly. This is what they were. And I folded it back up and I put the microfiche back in. And I said, I'd better get out of here because I've now got this. So I put the put the yellow pad under my arm and I go back out and I walk out. And these two suits that were out there were kind of surprised that I'd come out of there. And so I'm I'm walking away and I pick up my briefcase and I walk away and I get about 15, 20 steps away from them. One of them says, hold it. What have you got there? And I said, oh, it's my briefcase. I just picked my briefcase back up. And he said, no, what's that under your arm? And he walked over to me, and he snatches the yellow pad away like this, and he ruffles all the way through all the pages of it, and there was nothing, nothing there. On it. So he hands it back to me. Because <laughs> it was on the cardboard. And so, and so I, go, I, go back, I go back the following Monday morning to Jesuit headquarters, right, right there in Washington, and I go in to see Father William Davis, who was my immediate superior at the Jesuits, and I, sh- I show him this, and I tell him what I found. And... Uh, he, he reaches down and he slides out the bottom drawer of his desk. I'm going to pause it right there at a cliffhanger. Now, notice what he said. He's a Jesuit. He mm. was going to be a Jesuit priest if he hasn't already. And he is going back to the, the Vatican, basically, the, the Jesuit priest, his superior, and giving him this information that he got from these archives. Wow. <laughs> There's too much detail in this for it to just be a story, I think. Right. And... um. I was thinking the same thing when he was just describing the crash landing that it was Roswell, but he was saying it was actually uh, in the snow and stuff. But this whole description that he's describing sounds just like the MIB movie, Men in Black. Remember, <laughs> like you're going down an elevator, there's dudes in suits, it's kind of real empty and everything. And then you got like these folding tables. Um, wow, man, I, I think there's a lot of truth in some movies, you know, I think they throw stuff in there to make a. Uh, make the reality seem more fiction you know if, if somebody starts talking about this like ah, i've been watching too many movies but i just thought it was interesting <laughs> that he was describing almost to a t the the scenes from the mib movie <laughs> but but at this point he's going to the supervisor and he's going to give give him his information let's see what happens next yeah and he takes out a little manila envelope and he slides out of it an eight and a half by 11 black and white glossy photograph of a ufo and and he hands it to me, and he said he said uh, my sister sent this to me. Dodie, Dodie sent this to me. 
her husband, whom I had met, was a, 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 an air traffic controller in the Seattle airport. And his best friend is a commercial pilot who took this photograph right out of the window of his plane. And he didn't dare report it to anybody because of all this right. ridicule. Fact. Right. So he brings it to his best friend, who is the air traffic controller, saying, there, now I've done what I'm supposed to do. He brings it home and didn't know what to do with it, gives it to his sister, Dodie, and says, give this to your brother. He's a priest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so he had it in his drawer. You know, he's having to say, what does that mean? What does that mean? Mm. That so isn't that interesting that, that regular people said, I, you know, I don't know what this is. Well, let's go to religion right, and give it back to a priest. Because they're, the things that they're encountering are scary and supernatural and paranormal. And they're thinking automatically, we need a priest to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet we're being told the, the narrative, if you will, from the movies and uh, all the occult and all that is, now, these are really visitors from another galaxy. You know, a priest isn't going to be able to do anything to this. And yet the Vatican has come out and they have the largest observatory, right? They have, mm -hmm. um, they've come out and said that they have, uh, uh, they would baptize an alien if it came yeah. out. Why, why would he even say that? Unless, you know, in the back of your head, you're going, hey, uh, there's something strange going on here. Oh, and at their nativity scene two years ago, they had a, a ancient astronaut dude standing there at the nativity <laughs> so weird <laughs> so so he's uh, uh so they're they're going to talk a little bit about religion now what's really fascinating is i think this guy he's going to go he's going to start to go into some stuff that i'm not sure is is 100 correct or not this is kind of just his his backstory and his testimony and right. um then he's going to talk a little bit more about stuff that might not be 100 correct so put on Put on your ears and uh, and uh, and send a prayer up because we're gonna we're gonna dive deep tonight. That people think like that. Why, why is this something that they should tell a priest about? You know. And there I was at Jesuit headquarters in the process of becoming a priest, a Jesuit priest, and uh, and here I'm getting all this information, and yet the Vatican won't show it to us, won't tell us. You know, even a Jesuit who's the head of the Vatican Library won't show this to us. So, so, so I went to the National Council of Churches in, in, in WISC and asked them to set up a task force, and they wouldn't do it. So, so that, that's how I got into this, so that I ended up getting contacted by Stephen Greer, uh, and he wants me to be general counsel for the Disclosure okay, Project. Okay, he's going to tell it. I was going to say, if you don't know who Stephen Greer is, he's the head of the Disclosure Project, and that dude goes out in the fields with people. He's like, you know, scientist-type guy. He's got the pencils in his pocket protector and all this stuff but he goes out in the fields with multiple people and and meditates to summon aliens and summon yep. ufos man this is where that guy is and he's putting on these conventions where multiple people sit on a panel there's a bunch of people out in the audience and they're saying look this is real the public needs to know we're gonna bring full disclosure about aliens yeah it, it's really sad because i think i think stephen greer <laughs> He's really done, and unfortunately, he's done a lot of research into this mm -hmm. so far. I mean, he's gone so far into it that he has the absolute wrong message. Right. And how can you do so much research into something and have absolutely wrong, and be absolutely wrong? Well, the, the reason is because these entities are forming the narrative and right. giving it to him. And yeah. so that, that's, the, that's the big danger of looking into this stuff too far is, is you might actually find what you're looking for and it might be completely wrong yeah and satan has done such a good job at making people not want to look into the bible you know through the all the movies and stuff he's always made the villain he's always mocked i mean you see it whenever you see a christian in hollywood it's always they're being mocked and made fun of like think of ned flanders on the simpsons or whatever yep. and it's just nobody wants we live in an abc uh, culture, anything but Christianity. Literally, you could walk up to somebody and say, "Hey, I, you know, I started doing yoga and, and meditation. It's been doing wonders in my life." And people would be like, "Oh, wow, that's pretty interesting." Or you'd be like, "You know, I, I'm thinking about becoming a Muslim, or uh, you know, I've been, I'm a Buddhist now, and I'm a vegetarian, and all these things." And they're like, "Oh, wow, that's pretty cool." And then you say, "Hey, I became a Christian. I've been praying every night and going to church." And what, man, get out of here with that junk! You know? <laughs> oh, right. Why is it like that? But that's that's um, where 
where Greer is, you know, he's probably like, man, Christians, the Bible, no, this is, this is scientific. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that my job was to vet all the different potential candidates we had. This was late 90s now? This is, this was 2001. Oh, it was yeah, in oh, yeah. 2001. Yeah, this was like okay, beginning of 2001. Yeah. And he, he asked me if, if I would, because I had gone by this time from 1994 with Dr. John Mack and all that. Mm-hmm. I was invited to go to the International UFO Congress right. and brief Laughlin. them mm-hmm. about how this thing was going with right. Dr. John Mack, because everybody was up in arms over right, this right. thing, right? Yeah. And so I, I came in originally in 1995, I think, and briefed everybody at the International UFO Congress about what John Mack was doing and stuff, and in, in, in my getting to interview more and more people about this. And and so they asked me, I say, look, it's, it's a little unique to have a Harvard Law School graduate who's legal counsel for the Jesuits to be here talking to the UFO community. Will you tell us what you think about all of this? And so I began to be invited back fairly regularly, and I was explaining to them. And it was it was enabling me to think much more deeply about all of this, to take the time uh, to think about all of this. I had already done the J- the JPL uh, lecture to the SETI people, yeah. so I at first explained to them the theological implications of all this and the philosophical implications, and then I started talking to them about the different worldviews that people have, that people actually experience the UFO phenomenon from the perspective of their worldview. And that's what they think about the UFO phenomenon. So if you're, you know, a military person, you think about it as a military threat. You know, if you're a, kind of a, a new age person, you think of, oh, these are going to come and save us. They're going to solve all of our problems. And so that different people have different experiences of the phenomenon. So you, here you have at Disclosure, which was Stephen Greer's attempt, just bring the experts in, let them yeah. tell what they saw. You're yeah. there. You've vetted them. In a dead uh, silence on the part of the media. Dead silence. Yeah. And, and I no, mean, no I was there. No congressman wanted to talk about it. No one wanted to talk. No. And these guys, I mean, some of these older men in particular who had been holding on, yeah. to, uh, you know, through their national security oaths were in tears. I mean, yeah, it was yeah. very challenging for them to tell and, the and story. I, I, agree, I had agreed to represent any of them. Yes. If they tried to revoke their, their, yes. their pensions. Exactly. Or tried to, you know, prosecute them for a violation of their security clearance. I had agreed to represent them individually. So that's. So do uh, you know what he's talking about here, Mikey? Have you, uh, he's, have you heard of this? this um, not exactly. This about the called, guys in tears and everything? Yeah, this is called the Disclosure Project. They okay, had, yeah, I do know about the Disclosure Project. Yeah, yeah. They had a huge, I mean, just a huge mass of military, former military, retired oh, yeah, military yeah. that came together and they told all their stories. It's all on old SD VHS style tapes now, but. Yeah. This was a I remember watching time. that when I was still not knowing what it was, you know, when I was a Christian, but I believed in aliens and I didn't know uh, that there were demonic beings or whatever. I remember watching that and I was like excited, like, dude, it's coming out. The disclosure, like people are coming out with it, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I, I think it was even like former NASA people. I know that uh, Carol Rosen was on there. The She was the spokesperson yep. for... Um, mm-hmm. Oh, I can't think of his name. He started NASA back when he was a Nazi scientist and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I can't think of his name. Warner Von Braun. Yeah, Von Braun. That's right. Yeah. And she was the one that said this whole thing that he told her this whole thing was all a lie. Then there would be terrorists. Then there would be third world countries. Now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids. And then he would repeat to me over and over and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. And they're all lies. But yeah, she's at the disclosure thing saying that people need to know. Hmm. It's mm-hmm. like uh, maybe she didn't fully believe what he said or something. Yeah. Something. But it's, it's really interesting because because he, he he's saying that Greer was the one who started the whole disclosure project. And it was on his team vetting these people that were up there. And so um, I was, this was kind of, that disclosure project was kind of what set me in motion to try to start to look into making a documentary wow. 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. And so anyway, it's, that's fast, fascinating. That, that little tidbit of history of how this is coming together is, is interesting to me, but, um, but still he's going to go in now into, into more detail about, um, about what's really going on, why the government is, uh, you know, very secretive about this, and uh, also what the uh, narrative is that he's been told. Check it out. 
So that's how we got a number of them to come to forward. To come forward, but they were still scared. Oh, yes. So the point is, we did have a public disclosure. Yes. It went nowhere. Okay. Yes. So now we have this very deep dialogue that you're developing. That's right. And you and I talked off camera about this, and I, I saw it for myself. I was at a Buddhist um, retreat at a, at a monastery uh, recently, and I ran into a, a scientist from JPL. I said, oh, well, I, I'm just contracting right now. I'm not working full time. I said, what's you on? She said, well, they've given me some of the, you know, some of the um, samples from Mars, and we're looking to see if it's possible there's any life, life on Mars, microscopic and microscopic life, life yeah, on yeah, Mars. Yeah, and, right. and I thought, oh, gosh, here we go. And you and I talked off camera, and if you will explain to people how the public disclosure is going to likely roll out. Oh, it's yes. not going to be a, oh, yeah. another big event. The big no. events have occurred, and it That's went right. nowhere. No, no. What's, what's, I, I believe that what's happening now is and there's two parts to this answer I said that one of them is, is that now that these planets are being discovered yes what they're going to be doing is they're going to say oh look we've discovered a planet that has a sea of ice and we've now we've now discerned microscopic life beneath the surface of this ice and so they're going to break that to begin with then they're going water. to say they're mm -hmm. water mm -hmm. in, in, in microscopic mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and now we've discovered uh, uh, aqua uh, life in the in the seas of another planet we've discovered you know uh, very primitive uh, reptiles and stuff on another planet we've discovered mammalian uh, life on some other planet like and they're eventually going to get they're just going to feather it in one step at a time like this and they're going to ultimately say oh we've discovered some extremely primitive life form like Cro-Magnon you know, life forms like that, whether they're reptilian or mammalian or whatever they are. And what they're going to do is they're, 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 they've decided to Spoon feather feed. in, feather mm -hmm. in to the, to the world public the, the existence eventually of a more sophisticated civilization. And they're going to keep secret the fact that they know that there's a very highly technologically developed uh, civilization that's actually been coming here. And they're just going to blow right by this. But, but second part of the answer to that question about disclosure and, and this is Randy Copang. Randy Copang, who is who's been to every single UFO conference, he's got copies of every single speech that's ever been given. He said, "Look, when you really look at this, they're engaged in a disclosure project. It's already they, they, yeah. they are engaged exactly. in a disclosure project. They are feathering in this information yep. to, to different people, including journalists, you know, Linda Moulton Howe, oh, yeah. and others. And they're they're giving them access. There's people from Area 51." That are being allowed to come out and, and talk to people in Nick public. Nick Pope and the yeah, whole that's English right. that's story. Right. Yeah, they're 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 allowed to come out. Yep. And and he said this is interesting to me because what he's saying is is still a hundred percent true. I, they are, I believe this a hundred percent that they're yeah. not just gonna. It's not like you're gonna wake up tomorrow and they're gonna say uh, the you the aliens have landed. It's gonna be man. They've already been doing this. Like we thought we found microbial life on a meteor. It's like always these little things here mm -hmm. and there that just kind of go by and you don't really hear much about it but yeah it's going to be a little bit by a little bit by a little bit I yeah yeah it's, it's it. the subtle the subtle uh creeping compromise is what's going to happen and, and 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 that's that's always the way too because if you if if aliens just came out of nowhere and presented themselves in front of cities it would be absolute utter chaos but if well, we discovered yeah. them Oh, look at us. Look how great we are. We found them first. Very good. Yeah, good analogy. Um, good analysis. But yeah, like when they did the um, War of the Worlds on the radio, man, people committed suicide because yes. they believed that there was really uh, alien ship landing and, and they were describing it like, oh, it's hideous. And, um, you know, and now he's got a ray gun or whatever. And people were terrified. So people yeah, they, they, that, I wonder if that was like a, like a social experiment or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the Bible talks about people's hearts will fail them because out of fear. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if that's talking about something like this, the fearful sights that of the supernatural. I think it is being faced with uh, demons manifesting. Yeah, I think so. So another thing interesting about this, though, is that um, if you haven't seen my documentary called Starfall, I go into it in the second half of the documentary talking about what he's talking about right now and what he's talking about is how the government believes that they are still in commun they're in communication parts of the government not higher ups just like he was talking about at the beginning not the higher ups in the government because they consider the president as a temporary employee but mm -hmm. the people that need to know have been set in place and they said we've been here we're lifers 
we uh, not everyone needs to know about this stuff. And he's going to talk about this next. But but what he's mentioning right now is that I mean, we can even see it has come out in WikiLeaks that that um, all these people are um, are privy to this information already, and they're trying to push this stuff out into as many resources as possible. So the Blink-182 guy, his name was Tom DeLong. He got involved in this, and he's been very vocal about it and how he uh, had went to the government and said, hey, hey look, I want to be involved in disseminating this information. I know what you guys are doing right now. I want to push this stuff out for you guys. And he got very far up into the government and has a very long story on Coast to Coast AM talking about this stuff from 2017. I think he did another one recently, like just about a year ago or so. And so what he is saying is completely on key with WikiLeaks. It's on key with what information is already out that is declassified. So up until this point, it's fascinating to know that... Um, that that at least the narrative that's being pressed into the public is 100% what he's talking about. I don't believe that there are aliens talking to the government except for demonic entities, which essentially are aliens. But they're pushing a a, a, a narrative that's that's deceptive, right? I was thinking about Tom DeLong too, and uh, he was talking about you know some of this stuff leaking out and getting out a little bit at a time. See he. He's reaching the pop culture scene uh, by making it look trendy and cool and put it in comic books and kind of being like, hey, I'm with the CIA and they believe these things because he, he'll get on these interviews and he'll say, look, there's some things that I can't say, but this is the things that they want me to say. So he's saying they want me to tell you certain things. Um, so there's that side, the pop culture side. But then you got NASA who hired 24 theologians. They're hired to to present and handle what are we going to tell the religious people when this happens when when contact comes disclosure whatever comes what are we going to tell the religious people i'm curious i'm, I'm curious to know what they're going to tell us wow wow start it back up i'm curious what's what's next and, and randy is writing a book about this now saying wait a second don't you realize that there is a disclosure project going on it's just, it's just taking an it's entire perpetual. generation yes that they're going to take the entire generation from 1947 with the Roswell encounter all the way through. And they're going to have an entire generation. They're planning like a hundred year rollout of, of, of more and more information to the point where this generation passes from the scene. But the new generations coming in behind us are completely acclimated to this. Right. Because you, you take the millennial generation that are basically 33, you know, down to about 20, uh, uh, about, about 15 right now, that millennial generation you know, you, you poll them, and 95% of them will tell you that it's absolutely clear that there's extraterrestrial intelligence. Right. You know, not only that, but it's very likely that there, these UFOs and ET contacts are happening. Right. You know, and so the, this, this second answer to the question is there's already a rollout that's, exactly. that's going on here. Okay. And, but, but they're going to go this other route of doing it kind of formally. And, but this other one is kind of informal. You For know, the you, early adopters that are willing to listen. Th that's right. Do, do you think, do you think, and this is the big question, I yeah. think everybody in this particular area of study is asked, do you think that the incredible um, caution has been justified that the public at large really isn't capable of handling this if it were something to happen very quickly? No, no. Again, I, I, think, I, th I think there are two answers to this. That it's, it's not because of the, of the public. What that, are they concerned about? I mean, no, there's the whole technology that's part the of one. the story. That's the first one. Remember, now, yeah. during the Cold War, right. during that entire period, remember the Cold War went all the way from 1917. It didn't mm -hmm. just begin in 1945. Mm -hmm. It began in 1917 with the, with the overthrow by the Bolsheviks right. of the Tsar of Russia, Alexander. And ever since that time, there's been this dialectic going on with the, the nation state uh, capitalists and Western civilization against the socialists in, in Eastern uh, culture. And, and the bottom line is, is that as long as the Cold War was going on, the United States was never going to reveal any of the technology that they had they had encountered with the Roswell crash right. okay and they were going to try to weaponize it right. you know the old the old saying the sufi saying when a, when a pickpocket meets a saint all he sees are his pockets right right okay <laughs> and, and so the, the, the coming at it from that perspective that worldview, which is a dialectical confrontational worldview, that they perceive these these extraterrestrial people as being a potential threat mm -hmm. okay and so that their their job it's their job assigned by both the Republican and Democratic Party. Your job is to protect the airspace. 
you know, and not allow anyone to come into the airspace that isn't monitored and taken care of. And here these people are coming and going, and we can't admit that. But that could have been a sell to the public. Be afraid. Be very afraid. We well, need well, your money. We're developing well, so this stuff. They were still working on Russia mm -hmm. at that time. Because what they're doing is they're, they're being able to fund their, at that point, $300 million a year mm -hmm. to protect us against Russia. Mm -hmm. And now they're into doing anti-terrorism. Mm -hmm. You know, this big one. This big one that we, the, our, one of our major assignments that all of us who care about this is to prevent the the warrior class, the the national security state people, yes. from making this the ultimate other. Right. These are the ultimate other, and that we have to spend more than six hundred billion dollars. That was a year. the warning of Werner von Braun. That's exactly yeah. right. That they'll they'll go right to this yeah. thing, and so you've got to stop them from doing that. Mm -hmm. So you have to establish a a friendlier dynamic with regard which to which is what you're trust. doing. That's our job mm -hmm. is to is to do. But so that's that's one thing that that, that one which is comparatively predictable, mm -hmm. at least for those of us who spent you know, 30, 40 years in this right. area. That that's one we have to be careful of. But on the other hand, uh, Marshall Summers, has the, there's, a, there's a whole set of books that have been written by this fellow named Marshall Summers, uh, which, is, which is called The Allies of Humanity. Mm -hmm. And what he's talking about is the fact that there are, in fact, extraterrestrial civilizations that are very spiritually evolved, uh, and very compassionate and supportive of our human family here. Very concerned. Wow. Spiritually evolved. Wow. And so now, and, and now how he's going into stuff that's, that's the narrative behind this stuff. And uh, talking about how, and this is the narrative that's going to be pushed. There are, we found things on other planets. We found things on other planets. Oh, look, we found a, 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 an, a, an alien race that's more evolved than we are. We should listen to them. Exactly. And it's almost like it's already happening that Christianity is kind of like this primitive religion. Like you need to get up with the times. Like we don't even believe in genders and we're not binary and all these things. Um, and, and new age seems more like, oh, it's, this, is, this is where it's at. You know, I can ascend. I can be uh like christ consciousness and i can go into the universe and all these things astral project and have encounters with um ascended masters and alien beings who are our gods the the gods of aquarius and things like this man that that's what it's already happening it's already happening to where christianity is portrayed as some archaic uh bigot old-fashioned religion and this is the truth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would if if I didn't if I hadn't read the Bible, if I hadn't uh, uh, wasn't absolutely sure what I was believing in here. I mean, the fact that you can go to some other religion, New Age phenomenon, and talk with spirits, talk with things that are just it would almost prove it seems to me that hey, you know, if Christianity can't do this, then. Right. <laughs> Well, obviously, the works of this one is is better. And these are the wonders almost, I would say this is part, part, it's oh, yeah. part of what the Bible calls the overwhelming delusion that takes the world by surprise. That's the strong delusion. And I was thinking about, you know, this is also these doctrines of demons. And uh, yeah, you know, even in the Bible, Jesus himself said, uh, you know, in a, a heathen and adulterous nation nation ask for a sign but there will be no sign given yeah because his word is truth if you believe what's in the pages of his word you don't need a sign and that's a test of our faith when we say god your word says it i don't care what my senses say i don't care if there's um a dead relative telling me speaking to me and, and saying things contrary to the bible i believe the bible i believe your word we're going to be tested against all our senses what we see what we hear even what we smell or whatever people are having encounters with dead loved ones and they're saying it's not some holographic ghostly thing they're embracing them feeling their heartbeat smelling their smell and uh this is a very very deceptive thing and if we are not grounded in the word of god then we're going to fall for those signs that jesus said no sign will be given that wow. an adulterous nation is looking for a sign we cannot depend on signs and wonders that's exactly what's going to deceive the world that's what it says the dragon deceives the entire world through signs and wonders and miracles 
Wow. Wow. Let's continue. This is, this is fascinating. And this, this is the part that gets the most interesting from here on out. About what it is we're doing to the planet. Yes. The destruction of the natural environment. That this is an extraordinarily, uh, not unique planet, but it's a very rare type of planet that gestates life. Right. That the generates diversity of life. life. Yeah. The, the vast diversity of yeah. life. And it's a, it's an absolute fabulous experience. Yes. And, and the, but there's only one in every like five to 10,000 planets. So this is where he gets into the false narrative that's happening here. And you can kind of see how environmental change, which the Pope Francis has been talking about quite a bit. Uh, on this channel, we don't talk too highly of Pope Francis. We love Catholics and the people in the church. But there is the idea that, um, that uh, he is involved somehow. The Catholic Church at the highest levels is involved with this whole deception. And it's really, really mind-blowing how deep this goes. We're going to go further into this in Starfall Fall 2. But until that, you just got to trust me. Wow, I'm looking forward to Star, Starfall 2. Um, we know that there's going to be a one world religion in the last days. It says that all the world worship the beast. So there's going to become a system that's um, it's, it's based on peace and safety. Yes. But then sudden destruction will come upon them. So Reagan back in, I can't remember, uh, but he was at the United Nations talking about how, how all our differences would just go away if we were threatened by an alien race. And so this idea that uh, we can unify somehow through aliens and and if the aliens have the answers to all our problems such as the pandemic that's going on mm. and the climate change that's going on and and you know there's i have some skepticism about both of those things i think that we are ramping up towards something we're being pushed towards some big agenda that's coming a uh, a major deception a grand illusion and all these things are falling into place where two years ago we have a space force and now there's so, you know they said that there's been double the sightings of ufos since the pandemic like mm -hmm. i don't think all of this is coincidence <laughs> exactly that we're in a state of chaos where they're pushing the whole race war they're pushing the whole uh you know they're, they're putting up clocks now in big cities big digital clocks that say we have seven years left um, before climate change is going to destroy the world unless we do something right now this is big i mean yeah. when when the government is saying look there's a we're uh, 11 seconds till midnight on the doomsday clock and all this stuff they're telling us from every angle we're in a bad state of shape we got you know, we're, we're racing towards doomsday. We got UFOs and we don't know what they are. And there's pandemics all, and there's earthquakes all over. I mean, this is the, the stage is being set. Absolutely. Here we go. It has this capacity. So this quest we're on of these extra planets that we're looking for, there's probably 50 billion of them mm -hmm. that they assume right. are within the, within the Goldilocks zone. But there's, there's very few of them that are of this nature. In that we, as the, the custodians of this particular planet, this particular our, our species, Homo sapien, are not taking great care right. of this. In fact, we've allowed one percent to take control and destroy the planet. You know, and they're concerned about this. And this, this just to interject this. No matter which books you read on abduction and variations of that, yeah. this is the theme that comes up over and over when the people go wherever they go. Um, they see the future scenarios and what's happening That's to right. the earth. This is That's a common right. yeah. threat. But, but as, but as yeah. Marshall Summers points out in his books, he says, look, the, the fact that there are these allies uh, of the, our, our human species mm -hmm. that have been here and have been trying to warn us about right. this, the fact of the matter is that many of the, of the extraterrestrial civilizations in the life forms are sort of like we are. Right. You know, they see the planet as a great source of resources, you know, in, in, in the DNA materials right. and stuff for, for planting life on other planets, etc. And these people, these other extraterrestrial species are not necessarily any better than we are. If you really think about it, you know, that they've got specific objectives, the commercial trade, you know, in exploiting resources, mm -hmm. etc. And so the fact is we're getting this mixed message. 
that there are some people that are, there are some beings that are coming here and that are experimenting with us. They're, they're doing biological experiments like we would we, in the jungle. That's what we do. You know, yeah. you know capturing people mm -hmm. and, and experimenting with them, or just like we do chimpanzees. Right. So that there's, there, this, it's important for people to understand this is a sophisticated issue. And there's a cross section yes. of different types of, of beings that we're encountering here. And so it's the allies who are these spiritually evolved beings in that we need to establish our communications with these beings and, and not fall into being duped into just having someone arrive and say, here, we can give you some super technology because we've yeah. got super luminal travel and, and, you know, and here all you have to do is end up establishing a, a unilateral uh, a, a treaty with us mm -hmm. or an, a, a trade agreement with us, like a TTP. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, we're uh, talking uh, about that in the <laughs> next show. That's right. I... You know, but, and so, so we have to be very careful. And what I've been trying to do is to use the special privilege that I've been given uh, of, of getting access to a Harvard education and a law school education and, and with the Jesuits and all the different people and meeting, you know, Baba Muktananda and getting to meet all the spiritual leaders of our, our people and our planet is to try to develop a really intelligent, uh, sophisticated, spiritually informed, but rationally developed uh, set of policies for our dealing with extraterrestrial civilizations. Dude, this is just really just blowing my mind. We are so living in the last days right now. Like, if Satan is going to counterfeit the second coming of Christ, he's going to um, create a mythology about himself where he is the savior, the Messiah of the world. And yet, that lady said, all these abduction stories are saying that they're shown the same thing. Mm -hmm. Your world is racing towards impending doom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the message that the demons are giving people. They're, they're capturing them in, in some way, one way or another, because somebody has opened up a gateway. That, that's another thing that we should make uh, people aware of, is that when you start messing around with the occult, you're giving Satan access to be able to yes. uh, deceive your mind and, and even give you hallucinations and all kinds of stuff. These psychedelic drugs and things when you start hallucinating and stuff that's you're messing around with spiritual stuff and when people have these visions or out-of-body experiences astral projection mm -hmm. uh, they're meditating and they're seeing ascended masters and things like that they are interacting with demons you're giving the the demonic world access into your life and so when these abductions happen which is nothing more than like a an interaction with de demons mm -hmm. like you would uh, ascended masters they're always telling the same message you are racing towards impending doom and you need our help the aliens who are the demons are setting themselves up as the gods of this Savior. world the saviors who are going to save humanity and you look around in our world and we're we're buying it we're we're selling it we're selling the idea that we have seven years left yeah before climate change is going to destroy the world and it's just man it's amazing to think about what is going to happen in seven years man and and morneau said the same thing he said demon yep. spirits will come and present themselves as beings from far distant galaxies coming to earth yep. to, to tell about an impending destruction unless something proper is done to avoid it that was from that he was told that a lifetime ago <laughs> 40 years prior to the 90s. Right. And getting that from a high priest and a demon worshiping cult. I mean, that guy was uh, proud to tell Roger. He said, Oh, it's fascinating. Let me tell you more about what the master said, talking about Satan, mm -hmm. about how Satan was telling him how he was going to take over the world. Yep. And you can find that if you if you're wondering where that is, it's deep in some in like a four and a half hour episode of Roger Monell. You can find it on YouTube or you can watch our both of our 35 minute documentaries on YouTube. Mikey Jenny's is disclosed. Right, Mikey? Yep. On Little Light Studios. Yeah. On Little Light Studios or on this channel uh, called Starfall. And it's it's very fascinating. We've already mentioned these these before, but um, really really interesting. We got clips of what's actually going on in those documentaries, but we haven't even finished this yet. So this is going to get even more interesting as we continue. Should we start? Yeah, let's go. And that this is a very important responsibility that our generation has yes. because we're at that spot. We are privileged to be in the position of when this is happening. 
And so we have to develop something because this is going to affect our human civilization for tens of millions of years. And so that we're at that exact juncture. So if people are wondering why they happen to have been born at this particular time, wow. what is the special mission that our generation has? And this is it, to protect our planet from an economic system that, that Pope Francis has warned us about, wow. that are exploiting the resources of our planet, are destroying the natural resources, that are threatening the entire ecosystem that we have. Our responsibility is to, to undo this, to deconstruct these structural sources of injustice. Yes. As the Jesuit order, the Society of Jesus has said in their 32nd General Congregation documents in 1975, our responsibility equal to the preaching of the mass each day, which we would say. I just got to just say something about that society of Jesus or whatever. I forgot that that's literally what the Jesuits mean. How deceptive is that? That literally the satanic agencies use a, their, they name their organization, the society of Jesus. Right. Oh my equal to the meditation practice that right. each of us has. You know, that we have an obligation to deconstruct the structural sources of injustice in both Western and Eastern culture yes. on our planet. And we have to develop an economic system which is compassionate yes. and caring for not only the planet, but for the poorest of the poor. And the, this is what Francis is I calling just going people to say out that. to yep. in mm -hmm. his papal encyclical in mm -hmm. June of, 19, of 2015. Yep. That he's asking all of us to come forward and at the same time, in his earlier statement, they called Evangelii Gaudium, that he has issued a call for all people who have faith in the future of our human family to come forward with the good news that there is, in fact, a future for us. But we have to take responsibility for our planet. And we have to be careful with the second call the Vatican has issued for developing a really careful and sophisticated process by means of which we begin to communicate with extraterrestrial civilizations. And mature diplomacy. A mature diplomacy. Yeah. That those, those are the responsibilities that we have, both of them. Well, you have your work cut out for you, and it's really a uh, truly profound project that you're doing at New Paradigm Institute, and that's going to be the subject of our next conversation and more. So I think you've given everyone a taste of Danny Sheehan, and I can't thank you enough for your decades of ethical work, and you're still going strong. Well, people, people can contact us yes. at the Romero Institute. Yes. The New Paradigm Institute is a, is a wholly integrated auxiliary project of the Romero Institute, named after Bishop Oscar Romero. Is it Romero.org? Romeroinstitute.org? It's, it's Romeroinstitute.org. Yes. And they can contact us, yes. and they can become members, and they can get newsletters from us, and people can participate. Because this is, everybody has to get on board this operation, because we all have to participate. I want our people to be participating in this process. You want all of the perceptions everybody. and stories. I want everybody's perspective yes. on this thing. Everybody gets to participate in this because this is the our people are which is one of the signs that we need to be able to give to an extraterrestrial civilization that we aren't run by a one percent elite. Right. We're not run by some governing class. There's a collective that voice. There's a whole collective yes. process that our people yeah. are mature enough to make our decisions for ourselves and be responsible. So, so people contact yes. us and everybody participate in this. Absolutely, you can contact any at the Romero institute.org and get on board. Until next time, thank you for joining us here on Gaia. Daniel Heeshan will be our next guest on Change Normal. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. So he's literally like the spokesperson for uh, the Jesuits, man, for what they're going to call disclosure or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's got the inside scoop. He's he's a Harvard educated lawyer that's a, a Jesuit priest. <laughs> what I mean, that's, what that's, in the world? that's what's gonna happen is you know, this went from being tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists to now it's in, you know, it's on the history channel and it's in it's being talked about in you know Harvard scientists mouths and NASA and all these people, like even the even the um, astronauts of NASA will say that they believe in aliens, that they've seen them and everything. So, man, I mean, this is just, we are living in such deceptive times, man. <laughs> it is something else. It is something else. I, I, I mean, I, I couldn't even say any more to that. I mean, there's just so much going on in that one video right there that it just blows my mind. I, th I think we're probably going to 
<clears throat> come back to this video several times on this channel just <laughs> just to reference what's what's happening because he right he revealed uh the narrative I and mean, that's that's the whole thing the long and short of it everything that's going to be revealed is revealed in that video almost everything yeah i so. believe what he was i believe it's going to happen the way he said it is and he's presenting it like this is just the truth i'm looking at it like this is exactly how the deception is going to roll out and man and people are going to buy it i would have bought this i would have totally bought this uh oh, prior uh, yeah, prior to 2011, and I would have been a Christian and everything and would have believed this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why it says that many will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. These are not wow. pagan heathens that are buying into this. These are faith-believing Christians who are departing from the faith, the, uh, believing these doctrines of demons departing from the faith you have to be in the faith in order to depart from it yeah these are people in the church that are going to leave wow yeah. wow i can't i can't i can't say it enough i, I it's it's a mind-blowing thing and we got much more coming up because i got a list this is just one of the many list of things that i have to go over on this channel that uh, is just going to blow your mind so don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit that and bell notification and if you're interested, and if things like this are, are fascinating to you, if you think that we should talk about this stuff more, consider contributing in the links below. My name is Brad Burnham, and this is Mikey Jenny. Little Light Studios, we're on Strange Normal. Thanks for watching.